where you got your meditations, um, that's where you got your bread. And your dad used to have this book called Where There's No Doctor, and he would be replying and reading from this book. And he would be giving advice to some of the local village folks whenever they had various medical problems. Anyway, so this is kind of the background uh, in which we grew up. And we remember, you know, when we were teenagers, and one of my, one of my neighbors, his mother was in labor. And back then, almost all the women, more than 70% of the women delivered their babies with the traditional birth attendants. You know, most of the time, uh, birth, childbirth is a miracle. And most of the time, we are blessed that everything goes just fine. But we remember when my neighbor, Ben, his mother was in labor and was taken to one of the traditional birth attendants. And unfortunately, there were a lot of complications. So the villagers panicked. And that night, they borrowed a wheelbarrow from the local primary school teacher. So when they borrowed this wheelbarrow, loaded the mother in it, and so they were wheeling her down the six miles of the paved road. Just to give you a background, you know, in a place more than 3,000 people, less than 10 people own cars in the village. Uh, so your 911 system is very different from what we have here in the U.S. So that was the 911 system. Unfortunately, this woman died um, in the wheelbarrow. So they brought her back. Uh, you know, the following morning, we woke up to the village uh, women uh, wailing, and we knew that you know this was just another case of lack of healthcare and some of its tragic consequences. So this is just to give you a background on how we saw uh, firsthand what are the implications of not having healthcare around. And both my brother and I were interested in the sciences and we figured out you know, medicine would be a great way to have that intersection between human suffering, sciences, and how you can alleviate human suffering. So this is how we were interested in medicine. And after high school, we had both been accepted to uh, Nairobi School of Medicine. Uh, but it's around that time that you know we've done our college board examinations, done our SATs and tests of English as a foreign language. And you know we applied to come study in the US Benton had actually had an opportunity to do an exchange program with uh, Brooks High School in Andover, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So he'd actually been to the US for you know, two months, had seen MIT, had seen Harvard. So when he was coming back home in Kenya, you know, he had an idea of what higher schools of learning in the US looked like. And you know, back in Kenya, uh, Nairobi School of Medicine, as well as other schools of medicine. You know, we are plagued by um, perpetual um, strikes. They don't pay the professors well. So if you're supposed to finish medicine in five years, it will take you maybe about 10 years. Um, because people go on strike right when they're about to do their um, tests. Then you get delayed for like another half a year. Uh, they don't pay the professors well, another strike. So, you know, we figured out if we have this opportunity to come study in the U.S., you know, everybody would die to, to have this chance. And so when Milton got accepted to Dartmouth, and, you know, I remember when I was reading about Dartmouth College, um, somehow it happened to be featuring in some of the top ten lists. Um, the best campus food. College <laughs> <laughs> is beautiful. So you know, all these things seem to be coming together and we thought, hmm, Dartmouth College, this sounds like a fun place to be. <laughs> um, so Milton at least had had a warning of what winters look like. <laughs> I remember in geography classes in high school, reading about snow, reading about rivers that would freeze. And I thought, this is just some magical, mythical work. <laughs> <laughs> and until, until a 
showed up to Hanover. Um, but this is actually maybe just a few weeks before uh, September of 2001. Um, but I remember showing up to Denmark and that winter, uh, seeing that the river actually froze and thinking, wow, these things really do happen. Whatever we read in our geography books are real. This is. This is cool. <laughs> My first like uh, snowball fight when that snow first showed up. Um, and how did we get to Denmark? Uh, after we got a scholarship to come to college here, um, my parents ran out of money, so they didn't have money for uh, you know the the flight to bring Milton to the U.S. So our villages got together and you know they did a big fundraising, we call them harambees back in Kenya, where you bring a little bit of what you have, some people sell their chickens, some sell their goats, and you know, this was the son of the village who was coming to the US. Uh, so for most people, you know, back at home you the neat thing about the community is that um, everybody cares about everybody else. And you know, just as an example, that night when Ben's mother was sick uh, in labor, it's all the village young men who came together and were trying to get her to, to get some help. And so, you know, this was just a case of the villagers coming together to send one of their sons to the U.S. Um, and, you know, you know, they told Milton on that day, I remember during the fundraising, they said, Make sure you come back, and don't you forget about us. Um, but, you know, these were just good people uh, who were giving the love that they had to send us to school in the U.S. Um, so we were interested in medicine, but you know, it's not until it was my senior year in college uh, when my mother died of HIV/AIDS complications that. It became, it became an acute need uh, when we thought about how, you know, when she got sick back then, um, the stigma, the lack of resources. Um, back then when you were diagnosed with HIV, it was, it was a death sentence. So there are many people who never wanted to actually find out because if you knew you were sick, there wasn't much you could do. And being that there was no healthcare in the village, uh, she had to be hospitalized more than 50 kilometers away from home. And so my younger sister had to drop out of college, my brother had to drop out of um, college uh, to go stay with her in the hospital. And, you know, I remember uh, back then thinking, because Milton and I were in college and we couldn't be home to help our sick parents. And so I think it's around that time that we started thinking, what do we have around us? Um, what could we do to help make a difference in the lives of people back in Kenya? And so she passed away in 04, and then a year after that, 2005, within a month before graduation, then my dad also passed away, uh, also HIV <coughs> complications, TB. Um, but in the, in the time between we lost our mother to the time our father died, um, Milton had just begun medical school at Vanderbilt, and we came, you know, we came together with uh, our dad and we said, you know, what would it take to build a healthcare facility in our village? This is really something that actually most of the people in the village had been dreaming about, but there had never been kind of a practical way to make this happen. So that put together a village committee and you know, they gave us a number of about 25,000 US dollars. That's what it would take to build a small clinic in our village. So here I was a senior year in college. Um, <coughs> It's winter, it's cold, I'm studying for my medical college admission test, uh, doing off-season training for soccer, um, all 
these things happening, um, you know, everybody is kind of thinking about graduation coming down the road. And then Milton was in first year med school at Vandy, and so Milton says that Fred, you will be the chief fundraiser. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look at Milton and say, man, this, this is not a good idea. Because uh, you asking me to fundraise, I'm, I'm the shy one. I'm never going to be asking anybody for money unless I'm dying. Yeah? Yeah. So Milton was the man in charge of logistics. But there was all these uh, meetings with the Ministry of Health, coming up with a blueprint, all this that needed to be done. Yeah, I wasn't that much as the fundraiser in charge. So I said, hmm, well, I guess I don't like to ask people for money. I would do what I can. So I sent a topic to my soccer coach. Um, and then the guy who led our campus ministry, uh, I used to fellowship with the navigators uh, back when I was here in college. So I talked to Craig Parker. Um, and he said, I should 